if you want a camera for video, there probably is something much better just around the corner. So um, yes, as I was saying last time, there is something just around the corner. It's the Sony A7S II. Definitely something worth getting your mates in a headlock for. It was inevitable really, wasn't it? Sony A7S II, after releasing the A7R II, and before that, the A7 II. I mean, they released new cameras more often than I changed my pants. Mm, that sounds a bit wrong. I do change my pants quite often. And if I've run out, I just turn them inside out. I'm guessing Locke had to change his undergarments more frequently after handling the A7S II. Probably got accidentally busy with the jizzy after handling this low light monster made for video geeks. Now the megapixel count has stayed the same as the predecessor, but they've introduced some new features. 5-axis stabilisation is just one of them. But let's face it, having 12 megapixels, the same as before, is not a big problem, seeing as this is not going to be the camera you should go for if you're going to take lots of photos. What you should care about is that it shoots 4K internally now. It's like inserting an object into the back end of a cat. I don't, I don't really do that. Just saying. Just like with the A7R2 and A7 II, the in-body IS is useful, but not a miracle solution. One thing about the Sony A7R2 is that it had a significant amount of rolling shutter. It's pretty much the same with the Sony A7S II as well. The body feels just as good as the A7R2 and A7 II. Well, mainly because it's the same chunkier body. It is a much grippier camera than the original A7S. You can also customise the record button to one of the function buttons also, if you find one on the side a bit fiddly. Yeah, it's got faster autofocus too, but the real key feature of this is the high ISO. And there is only one way to test that out. In the studio of God! Well, this is quite dark, isn't it? It's really quiet as well. All right, not much going on there. So I went to the woods in the dark, hoping to see something interesting in the dark. That crazy high ISO and next to no light at all. But alright, who's going to shoot in a place like that with no lights? So I went elsewhere to keep testing. And yes, by the way, we've come here for an event. There isn't just a load of people rioting. This is packed with the video features that video geeks will love. We've got S-Log3 with this now. That's a new feature. There are a couple of new picture profiles, 8 and 9, an S-Log3 which gives you a huge dynamic range so you can pull out loads of details from the shadows. Right, now time to find a spot to see the fireworks where it won't be so crowded. Yeah, I was hoping for a bit more space than this. It's like being in Hong Kong again. And uh, I'm inadvertently taking video of the kids behind. I'm not like that. I must note that these are musical fireworks, and I don't mean Les Mis with explosions. Some DJs playing music. So Lot will have to slip in some fat, royalty-free music onto the video. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll play a millisecond of the original music for each song. If you can guess all of them, contact our social media men and you might win something. Might? ISO 25600 looks bloody marvellous cleaner than those rooms you see those intel bunny suit wearing people working in. Bumping it up and things still look really nice. That's nice, not noise. There's not much of it. And even at ISO 102400, incredibly respectable. It is quite amazing, wandering the streets with the A7S II and then looking at the file you have when you get back home. Anyway, the Sony A7S, low light, it's quite a beast of a camera, but do you need a beast? It goes really low, and the Sony A7R too is already pretty good when it comes to low light. So the question is, do you really need to go that low? 
in terms of the light. When we look at the A7R2's 4K footage, it's pretty decent at ISO 6400, although it gets pretty bad at ISO 12800 and above. In Super 35 mode, things are better. Good at ISO 12800, just about okay at ISO 25600. With the A7S2, the ISO 51200 puts it in the same kind of cleanness as the A7R2 at ISO 6400 in standard 4K mode, and better is the Super 35 ISO 25600. Naturally, the A7S2 goes much higher, so much so that I got bored of the ISO test and fell asleep. You'd have to ask yourself whether you really need to use ISOs that high. But having said that, when you use crazy high ISOs like that, it really does reveal a lot of details that you don't really see when you're actually there. Like... Oh my... I can't believe my eyes. Can you see those slightly magenta corners? Shocking. But nonetheless, if you're a video enthusiast that wants a 4K video camera, this is the one. This is the low light king. This, the A7S II neatly rounds up the second series of A7 cameras by adding a brilliant video camera to accompany the already brilliant stills camera that is the A7R2 and the, uh, hmm, well the other one that is the A7II.